Hi guys, it's Out of Darts. I know this is not the tutorial video that people were looking for, but I really wanted to do it because I've been getting so many questions about these springs. This is the Rival Kronos. It's one of my absolute favorite Rival Blasters, and it's probably the thing I've been most excited about this year. Now, uh, Captain Xavier, a good buddy of mine who lives nearby, has also already done a mod guide to this, but I wanted to additionally address some other concerns and questions and whatnot, because I have been getting a lot of emails and messages. Um, so this is the Cronus. We're going to do a full mod guide. Really simple. It's probably the easiest Springer um, I've ever modded, and it's certainly one of the easier Rival Blasters. But really quick, let's run through the springs. This is a full-length K26 custom on my store. This is different than you would buy from McMaster because it has flat ends. As you can see, both ends have squared off ends. This is a 4-inch one that is for a K... Uh, it's a K26, also with flat ends, but it's just under 4 inches, and this is for the Boomco M6 and the Boomco Farshot. Now this, due to its physical size of the links, when this is compressed inside of here, it literally will not prime because there's not enough room in this plunger tube. So this is not the spring you want. If you are going to cut yourself, you're going to want to grab one of these long ones and you can get up to three out of this. Um, I am also currently offering custom cut and crimped end ones just like this. This is 12 coils. You can do 11 and a half to 12 is my recommended range. Uh, on the lower end, you'll have a slide that moves. My apologies to one of my customers who got one that was cut a little short by accident. We've fixed that in the meantime. Uh, if you cut too long, of course, it won't prime. Uh, easy to cut and try again. But uh, 11 and a half to 12 coils is what you want. That one's pre-cut. Anytime you're cutting, please use eye protection. And as always, you're modding at your own risk. I'm not responsible for anything you do. So. Let's get going. So the first thing you do if you are going to cut yourself, you're going to cut this to 12 coils. Now I have one here that's just ready to go, so I'm just going to line this up, choose the spot. I like to wear a glove in my left hand and grab, grab this, and then you're going to pick your spot, and I am going to uh, go ahead and snip that. So I will eventually have a fully custom version of this that has flat ends with slightly larger gaps between the loops. It will be a custom spring for this blaster. In the meantime, I will continue offering. Now, I like to use a set of vice grips and a pliers to simply turn that edge back in. That way you're less likely to wear on the inside of your plunger tube on the blaster. So there's our spring. It's ready to go. That's at 12 lengths. We are basically done with everything else and it is time to get opening. So I will use a normal screwdriver. I do, of course, almost always use an electric one when I'm doing this uh, for customers or in, in bulk, but for simplicity. So once you've removed all the screws, you're going to want to take this slide off. And then there's one additional screw here. And the whole body should come off. And hopefully you don't do like I did and trap everything. You're gonna take this piece out here. You're gonna take this little guy out here. You can leave this little rocker there. And we'll pull out our plunger tube. I did lose this little spring here, which just goes back on top here. So I like to keep everything as close and organized as possible. I, I did lose a few more screws than I needed. Now, if you don't wanna have the safety mechanism, if you want this always to be able to fire, you can pull this out right here. Otherwise, I personally like the safety option. I'm gonna leave it intact. So we're going to simply remove our old spring, and you can see how much longer that is. It just doesn't have quite as much uh, uh, pounds per inch or kilograms per inch. And we're gonna take our new spring. If you have an open cut spring, I recommend putting that in the bottom, though it really doesn't matter too much. Um, you'll notice this is just shorter than the length of the plunger tube, and that is because it has this flat end. Now, if that end was sticking up, you wouldn't want it any longer than the plunger tube, and I know Captain Xavier agrees and mentioned this same thing. Uh, once you've got that, you are essentially done. Now, my buddy Triple B, or the Nerf Curator, actually removed uh, this O-ring and put Teflon tape around the bottom to create a much tighter seal in there. Now, I tried this, and while it did get me about another 10 FPS average, it actually caused the darts to spin out more. And I don't know if that's an air loss thing or just the sheer FPS, because as this spring sits right here with no modification, we're gonna shoot about 130, high 120. So it's really good performance at a rival to begin with. 
After our spring is on there, you want to make sure that notch is facing up because it lines up with the release inside here. And we're just going to slide this through and pop everything back into place. Um, I did once, my first mod, uh, flip that upside down and of course it will not uh, catch. And then we'll get all these pieces back in place. I'll leave. Hopefully this is clear for anybody that's having any problems putting it back together. Before you do finally close, you do want to check that you've got this piece here. This is stops here to um, allow you to pull it halfway. It makes priming it a little bit easier. Uh, and when we should be golden here. So go After you've got all the main screws on, you can put your slide back in. Watch out for this little guy here. You do want him. It's the only screw that really matters as far as size because it is smaller. And I have to apologize. I'm having problems with my table is wobbling, not the camera mount this time. So I am glad I did this simple tutorial before doing the Nemesis tutorial, which will take me most of a day to film. Great, now we've got it back together. Uh, we just want to finally test that it indeed does prime. This shoots hard now. It is definitely a huge step up. You can see here that when I fire the stock one, I get somewhere in the 70s range at the highest. And with this modified spring, this K26, I get up to around 130, averaging high 20s to low 130s. And pretty impressive. I think if you go any higher, like I said, sealing that O-ring, you actually run into problems where the balls start to curve out further. You will also notice that when you've modded this to shoot 130 feet per second, that the worse the ammo is, the worse that it's going to perform. So newer ammo and genuine ammo or the better headshot rounds are going to fire better out of this than uh, other generics. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will do a lot more mod guides in the video. I am gonna try to figure out why my table is moving so much to try improve the quality before I do any serious electronics ones. But there will be a lot more of this coming because I do really enjoy doing tutorial videos and I think they have a lot of value both for um, you guys watching and for my shop too. So until next time, I'm out of darts.